Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting um, a misty frosty sunrise over the South Downs. Um, a loose painting. I'm going to be painting it wet in wet but I'm going to be trying out or testing out these two new paint brushes that I got. They're Chinese um, natural hair short handled bamboo brushes, haki brushes. Um, the the bristles are natural, I think they're goat. Um, one is two inches wide or five centimeters, the other is one inch or 2.5 centimeters. So they're quite nice large brushes. Um, I bought them very cheap on eBay, they're nothing special. I just like trying out interesting brushes that I find online. I'm using a quarter imperial sheet of Milford 140 pound cold press paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees tilt. Um, I'm going to wet the paper all over, um, ac mostly across the top, and I'm going to wet it randomly across the foreground area. I'm trying to leave a curve across the horizon because this is a painting of the South Downs, so I would like to have a curved horizon in place um, when I paint my wet and wet sky to represent um, the gentle slope of the South Downs. Now I'm starting off with quite a pale mixture of raw sienna um, just to add some sort of a glow because remember I want to paint a sunrise so I want a little bit of a yellow glow but I mostly want um, to have the pink and the blue. So Rose Madder is my brush of choice and I'm going to put it on the larger Harky brush. Seems to be working all right. I think because it's brand new, I probably should have washed it out a bit more maybe or, or just tried it out a couple of times, but it's working okay. Spreading the paint nicely, nice and randomly like I like it for my wet in wet skies. Now this is Cobalt Turquoise Red Shade, goes beautifully with the Rose Madder um, and now I think, yep, I didn't control the water in it. These are much longer haired brushes than my normal Harky brushes and there's too much water in the brush so it's really ran down. Hopefully if I tilt the board now on its side, I can control that blue and I'm hoping that what it'll do, what it should do is color mix on the page and give me sort of different shades of pink and mauve in the sky. Hopefully, hopefully we can recover from that. But that's one thing that I've learned about this large brush is it holds a lot more water in the longer hairs than my shorter haired harky brushes so i'm gonna to have to watch out for that i'm just pulling the paint up towards the top right corner um, and now i'm just going to lay it flat for a little while just let that wet in wet paint settle while that's settling i'm going to try and put in sort of the loose underpainting for the downs I've mixed together the raw sienna and um, the cobalt turquoise red shade and I'm sweeping it across using the tips of the brush um, diagonally across the mid-ground towards the foreground bottom left um, to establish the shape of, 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 of a hill um, and the horizon line on the right will make my other hill. Now I'm going to bring the brush strokes down across there just to break up and add a little bit of direction to the shape of the land there. I'm trying to get in a little bit of pink and yellow glow onto the ground so that it looks like some of the sunrise is kind of the, there's some reflected light on the mist and the frost on the downs um, and then I'll put in some some darker contrasting trees um, as nice as these brushes are I am finding the the longer bristles a little bit harder to deal with now this is a mixture of 
um, sepia, indigo and Payne's grey and I've got quite a rich mixture but as you can see there's still lots of water still in the brush so it's starting to run down a bit um, and I'm just putting in a sort of stand of trees on this uh, foreground hill um, and then some bushes running all the way across down towards the bottom corner and because I dipped the brush randomly into the <clears throat> excuse me the indigo the Payne's grey and the sepia um, it's all mixing together and giving me a lovely effect um, quite naturally and loosely um, for the <clears throat> excuse me again the wet in wet part of the bushes and I'm going to sweep across some more of this dark across the foreground just to imply the land and the fields etc and then just a few distant trees on the top of that hill there just going off across the left hand side over the over the tape and then just going over the tape a bit more strengthening up the darks a little bit more on on this side here now I'm going to use the corner, the rounded corner of a plastic store card just to scrape or etch into that thick, rich, uh, wet paint um, just the suggestions of tree trunks and branches, a few sort of windswept uh, trees just in that little wooded area. Just soften back a bit more here and there. Just adding a few more darks. And I'm going to darken up that bottom left corner to balance things up a bit. Just soften that, there's a bit of a heavy mark there, just try and blend that in. It's all still damp there, so that should just diffuse out a little bit more. And now I'll just etch over um, those new, new areas of paint and pull out a few more branches, um, trying to keep them quite fine towards the ends of the of the branches. I'll go back over that probably with the rigger brush later on but for now I think that sets the scene for my trees rising out of the mist. And now just going to dot in to the still damp paper very gently just dot in a few more little bits of sort of like a, a mid-tone um, texture across underneath those trees just as a finishing touch uh, before I leave it to dry. I'm now going to leave it to dry completely and then once it's bone dry I'll come back and finish the painting. It's completely dry and it's diffused really really nicely. I like the sky, I think it's got a soft delicate glow and I'm very pleased with the suggestions of the loose woodland and hedges. I think these results so far mostly just using those two new cheap harky brushes I think that's that, that says a lot for them I shall certainly be using them again I don't think I'm going to be doing too much more to it just a few finishing touches I'm going to mix up a sort of inky consistency quite loose of um, sepia Payne's grey and indigo sort of pretty much on the sepia side so it's brownish um, on my fine, I think it's a size one rigger, and I'm going to just strengthen up the etched marks of the trees a little bit more, add a few more branches, um, and maybe just add in a few more sort of tree trunks just faintly rising out of the mist, uh, just to enhance that area a little bit more.
maybe a little bit of just a little bit of dry brush around the bases of them where they're coming out of the mist. Now using the same mixture but with a little bit more Payne's grey in it this time I'm going to use my small flat brush just to get in some gate posts um, just bridging this gap in the hedge here. And I'll use my one and a half inch flat brush um, just to put in the gate, um, the planking on the gate. It's a good size. Um, if I just touch the ends of the brush between the gap, it should just give me my, the bars of the gate. And then I'll go back again to the smaller brush for the reinforcing struts or whatever they're called. And then I'm just going to put in a few fence posts um, just running up the hedge a little bit unevenly spaced. Just to sort of finish that off and to link the hedge with the woods. I was thinking of putting some shadow onto the gate but I'm not going to because the idea is that there's mist swirling around um, down there in that hollow so I'm going to leave the gate unshadowed to try and enhance that misty effect. And I'll just lighten it off by dabbing it gently with a tissue where the paint's a little bit dark. Again, that just accentuates the misty effect. And now finally, I'm just going to put in a few birds uh, flying from the trees, probably going to try and find some food on the frosty fields. Um, I'm using my small rigger again and painting just a few of them quite, quite fine strokes because I just want them to be quite small. I'd like them to look in in keeping with the scale of the rest of the painting. I think that'll do. Now let's zoom out and have a look and yes I think that's finished. I think it's now time to take the tape off and have a look and see how it looks with a nice clean white border. Pulling the tape away from the painting, making sure that it doesn't tear into the painting. And I think that looks really nice. I like the way when you remove the tape, you can just see the sunset and the sky just going off out of the frame. Uh, now, if we take um, a closer look at the painting then we can see where there's plenty of white paper has been left um, which gives a nice illusion of, of not only mist but also of frost or maybe snow on the on the fields there's a nice soft diffusion of sky and sunrise has worked beautifully despite the, um, the fact that the brushes well my inexperience with the brushes caused it to be overly wet to start with um, this lovely diffusion is really pretty. Um, I'm very, very pleased with the brushes, actually. I think they're really good for large washes like that. I shall certainly be experimenting a bit more with them and um, trying to make sure that I can better control the content of water in, in, in the brushes. Always something that's important to be able to do with any uh, brush that large brushes especially wash brushes that hold a lot of paint or water well thanks so much for watching um, I hope you'll give this a go um, if you like the video please um, click on the thumbs up icon and if you're not subscribed then it'd be lovely if you could subscribe because that really helps with the channel's reach um, thanks so much to my lovely patrons on Patreon for supporting this channel. Very much appreciated. I'll see you again soon. Take care, stay safe and happy painting. Bye.